we'll begin to create our partition and examine how it can affect query performance. Now, first of all, I'm just going to create a blank database called Partition Demo. Now, partitioning really starts with having a good file and file group strategy in place. How one does this depends on everything from the type of hardware setup that's behind the data warehouse to the type of data and the amount of data. So for example, I've done one file group here per year. It could be that if there was gobs and gobs of data, it may have to be broken out into quarters. Or on the other hand, if there's less data, maybe several years are aligned in one file group. This all depends on the strategy behind the data and the setup. I've also gone ahead and made one file per file group, and so we have that set in place. All right, so I'm going to go and use this database now. And as mentioned in the previous video, we often have data management views that help us query our partitions. So let me just create that now. And now we can begin talking about partitioning. This is we have our setup in place. Partitioning is a bit of a stepwise process, and it's recommended that you do your partition strategy before you create your table and load it with data. So we begin with creating what's called a partition function. This creates boundary points in our data. Okay, I'm going to go to a website that I like that's nice and visual, and it's a good explanation, uh, littlekendra.com. I need to decide how I'm going to make my boundary points. Will it be left-based or right-based? So if I'm thinking left-based, then I'm thinking of less than or equal to logic in relation to my boundary point. So for example, we look at this first boundary point, 2016-08-31. Well, the left boundary would then put all the data that is before that, right, and so forth. The result is by doing a left-based partition, there's always an empty partition at the end since it uses less than or equals logic. The opposite is true for right-based. Right-based is greater than or equals to logic. So in this example right here, it's looking at the beginning of each month, the first day of each month, and so then the data gets split uh, per month after that point. And of course, we have the empty partition at the beginning. There is a bit of a strategy to this. Right-based partitions are for fantastic for just this example right here in particular, monthly data. We know that every month has an O1 value, right? This isn't true of the end of the month. So in this example, I might argue that it's not always the best to do uh, end of month with less uh, left functions. Where it works really well is getting end of year, because there's always a 31st day in December. So some people choose the left and right, depending on the type of boundary they're making. Now in this example, if we look at the highlighted code, my partition function, which is called order date key, needs to have the data type specified, of course, because it needs to know how to evaluate the data correctly. So in this case, it's an integer. Now this may be new to you. Often in class, we've used dates as at date time too. But dates can also be stored as integer values in a data warehouse. And you can see that in my boundary points in the function. So if we review the syntax, we create a partition function, we give it a name, and we specify the data type that the boundary point is. Then we indicate whether we're doing a left or a right range followed by a series of values that will be our boundary points. I give four boundary points, and there'll be one empty at the end, so it results in five partitions, right? Five spaces. And now my partition function has been created. Once I make my partition function, this provides just a scheme for how things will be divided up. From there, I need to choose how I want to align my files to the resulting partitions. We gave four boundary points, and as mentioned, there are five partitions. And so you see with my partition scheme, where I'm aligning my file groups to the partitions, we can see that we have five file groups to go with those partitions. In this case, I'm going yearly to match up with the boundary points. So I create a partition, 
scheme, I give it a name, and then I can align it to the file groups, and I'll do that now. All right, so from here, we need to associate the partition scheme with our table. Well, first of all, I'm just going to create an integration schema to go with my fact sales order table. Notice that I do my create statement, and in this case, we'll talk about this down the road, this table has a composite key made up of customer, product, order date, order no, and line no. Okay, not necessarily the best choice for a clustering key, but notice in this case it's non-clustered. I'll come to this at the end of our, our playlist to talk about how things might change if our order date key wasn't part of the clustered key here. So I do my create statement as we normally do, but when we want to partition a table, after the create statement, we use the on keyword and we associate the scheme with the table. In this way, it will align the partition scheme to the physical table itself. Now the rule is that the partition scheme must be on the table and all of its clustering indexes, they must all be on the same partitioning scheme. Okay. All right, so I've just a little routine here to make up some dummy data for 2018 to 20 and we'll run it okay now we can inspect the partition and this relates to a subsequent a previous video the end result is we have five partitions we have data in 2018 19 and 20 and then we've got our empty partitions on either side uh, what we're going to do to inspect query performance is I'm going to create an identical table to the other one. The only difference is it won't be partitioned. I'll quickly insert the same data that the partition table has into my dummy table here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to run two queries. And let me put my actual execution plan on. We're going to run, run one on the partition table and one on the non-partition table. So the non-partition table is the first one, and the partition one is the second one. So we'll execute that now, and then we'll look at the execution plan. Okay, so again, if we are looking at the first one, we can see that um, the table scan took, oh sorry, here it is, the query cost here took 70, 67% query cost. Look at the cost for the partitioned one, 33%. Okay, I put my mouse over this. Uh, and we can see, look at the number of rows read and the actual number of rows read, 365. It knew because it was partitioned, it only had to read the data from that partition because there was a predicate and that's that uh, date key, was part of the query that matches up with the uh, partition. If we look at the other one, look that it had to, number of rows read was 1095, and the number of rows for all execution was a 365 to do the sum. So we can see just from this one little example that partitioning can sometimes improve query performance because now we have data segmented in ranges by particular key values. Okay, now in the next video, we'll actually look at the benefit to data maintenance and partitions.